I want to welcome you in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ to our worship service here at St. Luke Lutheran Church. I just have a couple of announcements uh, to make. The first one concerns the yard sale that is scheduled for September 19th. We continue to collect items for that on Mondays and Wednesdays at 9 o'clock to 2 o'clock in the afternoon. Um, and they wanted to, to also announce that they are collecting uh, plastic bags for the yard sale. So there's needed plastic bags. And you can drop those off during that time back at the shed. There'll be somebody there collecting those. I also want to make sure everybody knows that the office is now open on Fridays. Um, there's a volunteer in the office on Fridays from 9 o'clock in the morning till noontime. Then finally, we want to um, remember in our prayers, uh, we, we lost a beloved member this past week. Karen Gooch passed away rather suddenly. Uh, so we want to remember her family in our prayers, especially her brother, Dennis. Those are all the announcements I have. Let us begin our worship service. Holy Spirit calls us together as the people of God. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who forgives all our sin, whose mercy endures forever. Amen. 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 Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. And now let us confess our sin in the presence of God. Most merciful God, we, we confess, confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have, have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us and lead us, so that, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. God, who is rich in mercy, loved us even when we were dead in sin and made us alive together with Christ. By grace, we have been saved. In the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. Almighty God, strengthen you with power through the Holy Spirit, that Christ may live in your hearts through faith. Amen. Amen. The 
grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also, also with, with you. you. Let us pray. O oh God, with all your faithful followers of every age, we praise you, the rock of our life. Be our strong foundation and form in us into the body of your Son, that we may gladly minister to all the world. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. God speaks to us in scripture reading, preaching, and song. The first reading today is from Isaiah, chapter 51. Listen to me, you that pursue righteousness, you that seek the Lord. Look to the rock from which you were hewn, and to the quarry from which you were dug. Look to Abraham, your father, and to Sarah, who bore you, for he was but one when I called him, but I blessed him and made him many. For the Lord will comfort Zion. He will comfort all her waste places and will make her wilderness like Eden, her desert like the garden of the Lord. Joy and gladness will be found in her, thanksgiving and the voice of song. Listen to me, my people, and give heed to me, my nation, for a teaching will go out for me, and my justice for a light to the peoples. I will bring near my deliverance swiftly. My salvation has gone out, and my arms will rule the peoples. The coastlands wait for me, and for my arm they hope. Lift up your eyes to the heavens, and look at the earth beneath or the heavens will vanish like smoke. The earth will wear out like a garment, and those who live on it will die like gnats. But my salvation will be forever, and my deliverance will never be ended. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Psalm today is Psalm 138. Read responsibly. I will give thanks to you, O Lord, with my whole heart. Before the gods, I will sing your praise. I will bow down toward your holy temple and praise your name. Because of your steadfast love and faithfulness, for well, you have glorified your name and your word above all things. When I called, you answered me. You increased my strength within me. All the rulers of the earth will praise you, O Lord, when they have heard the words of your mouth. They will sing of the ways of the Lord, that great is the glory of God. The Lord is nigh, is high, yet cares, cares for the lowly, perceiving the haughty from afar. Though I walk in the midst of trouble, you keep me safe. You stretch forth your hand against the fury of my enemies. Your right hand shall save me. You will make good your purpose for me, O Lord. Your steadfast love endures forever. Do not abandon the works of your hands. The second reading today is from Romans chapter 12. I appeal to you, therefore, brothers and sisters, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your minds, so that you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. For by the grace given to me, I say to everyone among you, not to think of yourself more highly than you ought to think, but to think with sober judgment, each according to the measure of faith that God has assigned. For as in one body we have many members, and not all the members have the same function, so we, who are many, are one body in Christ, and individually we are members one of another. 
We have gifts that differ according to the grace given to us. Prophecy in proportion to faith. Ministry in ministering. The teacher in teaching. The exhorter in exhortation. The giver in generosity. The leader in diligence. The compassionate in cheerfulness. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. Alleluia. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Now, when Jesus came into the district of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, Who do people say that the Son of Man is? And they said, Some say John the Baptist, but others Elijah, and still others Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. He said to them, but who do you say that I am? And Simon Peter answered, you are the Messiah, the son of the living God. And Jesus answered him, blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my father in heaven. And I tell you, you are Peter. And on this rock, I will build my church and the gates of Hades will not prevail against it. I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. And then he sternly ordered the disciples not to tell anyone that he was the Messiah. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. Christ. Sometimes... As I work on my sermon, it's a story from the Bible that, that grabs my attention. And I can't help but preach on that story, like the story of Noah's Ark, or the story of the prodigal son who blows in his inheritance and then returns home hoping that his father will forgive him. Other times, what might get to me are the thundering words of judgment from a prophet. Like when Amos shouts, thus says the Lord, I will judge those who trample the heads of the poor in the dust. Occasionally, I might tackle a theological insight, like something that the Apostle Paul wrote about. But sometimes it can just be one word that captures my attention. And that's what happened this week when I read our gospel for today. It's the word Jesus uses to describe Peter rock. Now, most of us probably don't spend a lot of time thinking about rocks. Maybe if you're in the quarry business or if you're in the construction business, you might think about rocks. But most of us do not spend time thinking about rocks. But this morning, I want to begin my sermon by thinking a little bit about rocks. Rocks come in all sizes and in all shapes, from smooth pebbles to immense boulders. There are clear quartz rocks and there's colorful gemstone rocks. And rocks have a multitude of purposes. You can, I remember when I was little, I would skip one across the top of the water. They can be stepping stones to help make our way easier. They can become walls to keep things in or keep things out. We use rocks to build a strong foundation, and if you're not careful, rocks can trip you up. They can cause you to stumble over them. The Bible, when you think about it, is full of rocks. Abraham used rocks to build altars to God. There are rocks in the wilderness big enough that they provided shelter and shade for the Israelites as they journeyed on their way to the promised land. Rocks were used to fortify cities against enemies. So rocks in the Bible are symbols of strength, they're symbols of protection, they're symbols of safety. In fact, God is described as a rock. The psalmist proclaims God is the rock of our salvation. The story of Jesus is full of rocks and stones as well. Jesus said to hear his words and live by them was like a wise man building his house upon the rock, a house that won't collapse during stormy times. 
And of course, there was the rock that covered the tomb of Jesus and miraculously was rolled away on Easter day. And that rolled away stone became the first hint or sign that Jesus was resurrected from the dead. In this morning's gospel, we heard Jesus asking his disciples, who do you say that I am? And Simon raises up his hand right away and he answered, you are the Christ, you are the son of the living God. And Jesus, so impressed by that answer, that Simon got the answer correct, he gave Simon a new name. No longer known as Simon, which means the one who hears God, but now known as Peter. And in Greek, that name sounds a lot like the Greek word for rock. Jesus said, upon this rock, I will build my church. Now, I find that an amazing statement from Jesus. Because if you stick with the gospel story, the story about the rock I will build my church on is immediately followed by Peter telling Jesus that he can't be the Christ and go to Jerusalem and suffer and be crucified. In that story, Jesus yells at Peter and actually calls him Satan. He says, get behind me, Satan. You are a stumbling block to me. For you set your mind not on divine things, but on human things. Peter the rock becomes not the church's one foundation, but a stumbling block for the Lord. Now, there is no doubt that Peter was the leader of the disciples. But he was also, at times, a man of little faith. Remember when he tried to walk on water? He sank like a stone. And when people quizzed him in the courtyard of the high priest's house about being a follower of Jesus, he denied it three times. He was the rock that crumbled that night. So when you think about it, Peter is very much like the church. He's just like us, or we're just like Peter, possessing good intentions, but sometimes falling short. Full of faith and hope one day, but then doubt and despair the next day. The church has at times been a stumbling block to God's purposes. As someone has said, the greatest violence done in history is usually done in the name of God. And when the church makes news headlines, it's rarely good news. Some church member caught embezzling church funds or sexual misconduct conduct by church leaders. And every congregation has its moments of being sinking stone Peter or stumbling block Peter. There are conflicts and divisions and mostly over things having little to do with following Jesus. Members leave over the choice of the color of the new carpet. I've had that experience. Wars break out over the worship service and gossip about a church council member having an affair. People, people outside the church wall see th these things. They hear about them and call Christians hypocrites, and so they stay away. Because people do expect to see a hint of the Lord here among us. People are looking for the presence of the Prince of Peace, or at least some effect of his spirit upon the people who say we follow him. People want to know that God is with us. But what they do not realize, and what I have learned over the years of working in the church, is that the church is not a perfect place. Members aren't perfect. Pastors, I can tell you, are not perfect people. The church is as full of problems as any group of people. But what we learn from this story about Peter is that perfection is not what makes us the church. Perfection was not what Jesus was looking for when he called Peter the rock. Peter was not perfect. So, what makes the church, church? 
Well, it's not the color of the carpet or which worship setting that we use, and it's not people who never make mistakes. Did you notice that Peter didn't come up with that answer on his own? Jesus said, flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father in heaven. Peter is not what the church is built upon. God is. Only by the grace of God could imperfect Peter confess that Jesus is Lord. In sinking stone Peter and stumbling block Peter, God is at work doing good things. God's grace is the rock foundation of the church. For it is only by God's grace that stumbling sinners like ourselves are able to stand every Sunday and confess our faith. It's only by the grace of God that such a different assortment of people might not otherwise even gather together, but we have and we do and we will gather back together and become the church. And it's only by the grace of God that can we sometimes selfish people reach out to other people in need. It's only by the grace of God that the church can become a stepping stone for people to reach and receive the love of Christ. You know, we're a lot like Peter, the rock. We do sometimes stumble and can get in the way of the purposes of Christ. But we, like Peter, live within God's grace and therefore able to do wonderful things. Christ said, Fear not, little flock, for it is my Father's pleasure to give you his kingdom. And where two or three are gathered together in my name, there am I in the midst of them. The church is built on that sure foundation. Amen.
confess the faith of the Church. I believe in God the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Confident of your care and helped by the Holy Spirit, we pray for the church, the world, and all who are in need. Lord, our rock, you are the found, our foundation in Jesus Christ, your Son, whom we confess as the living God. Prepare your church for its mission in bearing witness to Christ, both here at home and throughout the world. Lord, in your mercy, yeah, hear our yeah. prayer. You call for forth praises from the far reaches of the universe to the smallest of creatures. Join our songs to theirs, that a spirit of praise and thanksgiving will arouse us to cherish this wondrous home you give us. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our prayer. prayer. All the kings of the earth shall praise you, O Lord. Direct the leaders of countries, legislators and magistrates, mayors and councils to walk in your ways. Help leaders regard those in need with mercy and fulfill your loving purposes in the governance of peoples. Lord, in your mercy, hear our, hear our prayer. prayer. Though we walk in the midst of trouble, you preserve us, deliver us, and fulfill your pur purpose for us. According to your steadfast love, grant healing and wholeness to those who are bereaved, in trouble of, or adversity or sick, and in need of care especially Don Snow, the family of Karen Gooch, Bill Brennan. Lord, in your mercy, yeah, hear our prayer. prayer. Though we, you call us into this community, Ocean Isle Beach, in which we, though many, are one in Christ, may we recognize in ourselves and in one another the unique gifts you have given us for the building up of the church for the sake of the world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our, our prayer. prayer. You are the everlasting rock from which we are hewn, and you restore your people to joy and gladness in blessed memory and hope. We thank you for the lives of our beloved dead. Bring us with them to our heavenly home. Lord, in your mercy, hear our, hear our prayer. prayer. In the certain hope that nothing can separate us from your love, we offer these prayers to you through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also, and also with, with you. you. God feeds us with the presence of Jesus Christ. The Lord be with you. And also, and also with, you. with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Lord. And let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right, right to, to give, give our, our thanks, thanks and, and praise. praise. You are indeed holy, almighty, and merciful God. You are most holy, and great is the majesty of your glory. You so loved the world that you gave your only Son, so that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but have eternal life. We give you thanks for his coming into the world to fulfill for us your holy will, 
and to accomplish all things for our salvation. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. <clears throat> for as often as we eat of this bread and drink from this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Christ, Christ has died. Christ, Christ is, is risen. risen. Christ, Christ will, will come, come again. again. Remembering, therefore, his salutary command, his life-giving passion and death, his glorious resurrection and ascension, and the promise of his coming again, we give thanks to you, O Lord God Almighty, not as we ought, but as we are able. We ask you mercifully to accept our praise and thanksgiving, and with your word and Holy Spirit to bless us, your servants, and these your own gifts of bread and wine so that we and all who share in the body and blood of Christ may be filled with heavenly blessing and grace, and receiving the forgiveness of sin, may be formed to live as your holy people and be given our inheritance with all your saints. To you, O God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, be all honor and glory in your holy church, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who, who art in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. O oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. And Lamb, Lamb of God, God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Grant us peace. The body of Christ given for you. blood of Christ is shed for you. Amen. Body of Christ broken for you. Amen. The blood of Christ shed for your sins. Amen. The body of Christ given for you. The blood of Christ is shed for you. <clears throat> and let us pray. We give you thanks, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us through the healing power of this gift of life, and in your mercy strengthen us through this gift in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another, for the sake of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine on you with grace and mercy. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Amen.
Go in peace, serve the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Hello again, and welcome to our coffee chat. I hope everyone is doing well and staying safe. Um, just have a few things to talk to you about. Oh, first I want to, um, I forgot in my announcement to say thank you to Emil, who was the worship assistant for our worship today. I realized um, we're getting closer, I hope and think, to the time where we will be together in worship. Um, and he hasn't been part of worship for since I've been here. So anyway, so I called him up and said, you know, do you want to assist on, on, on this recording? And he said, yes, of course. So, so that, was, that was great. Uh, so try to get him back in the saddle again. Um, the other thing I wanted to say uh, is some of you probably saw this, um, but I think we might have made history this week for at least a uh, history of St. Luke. Um, Lori Schneider um, sent my installation picture to the newspaper and I wanted to thank her for doing that. I also wanna thank Lori, I don't think I've done it enough that she is our editor of, of these uh, Sundays or services and she's doing a great job, so thank you. Um, and she was, we sent an article with the picture. The article didn't make the paper, but the picture made the paper and so I'm gonna have Pam show you that picture and if you saw the the newspaper the beacon what is historical i think about it is my picture is on the page and then we have a member walt eckert is right above my picture <laughs> i opened the paper up and i couldn't believe that um we were posted on the same page so just above chris can they see that whoops so if you missed it, I just wanted to show you that, that happy coincidence. <laughs> there you have it. Well, there you go. <laughs> um, so Pam and I had a busy day yesterday. Well, Thursday, um, we recorded, I recorded services in the morning and then we spent most of the afternoon at the DMV in Wilmington. In Wilmington. Because we couldn't get into the one in Shalot. We couldn't get an appointment in Shalot. Uh, so we drove all the way to Wilmington and very nervous about the test to get our license. Pam was had an all-nighter studying. <laughs> <laughs> so, so we did that and we passed the test and I have a North Carolina license. Again. <laughs> Again, yeah. So they asked me um, if I ever had a North Carolina and they, license. Both of us, yeah. And I said, yeah, a long time ago, 94, we left. And, but they put our names in the system and we were still in, in the state system. So that was, that was pretty good. Uh, but we did pass the eye exam and the sign test. Yay. I got one wrong on the sign test. Pam did not get any wrong. So <laughs> she's reminding me. I studied that. more than you do. <laughs> So that's good. Um, so we did that finally. So we finally have our license. Uh, we're gonna get our car now registered um, and get the plates, North Carolina plates. That's, that's an on the to-do list as well. Uh, and then the final step on our relocation that's taken six months because of this pandemic has made everything so much harder to do. Um, on August 31st, we close on our house in, in, so we'll be living in Rourke Woods. Is that right? Did I get that right? Okay. And that, that's in Shalot. Yes. So we're very excited about that. And then we'll probably take a couple of weeks of doing some painting and things and getting the house ready and then get our stuff moved here in the middle of September. Yeah. I'll be painting. Yeah, Pam's Pam's the painter. I gotta buy a ladder. <laughs> um, so that's that's all happening. So that's that's all good things. So we're gonna be official. Yeah, we'll which is great. Um, I said in my announcements the sad news about Karen Gooch passing away, and that was that was a sudden thing, um, and I'm I I didn't. So between recording the service and now, I met with her brother and niece to do some planning. And we did plan, and the plan is to have a private ceremony here at the church 
uh, and that'll be on Monday. Um, and then she'll be um, interned in the columbarium also on Monday. Um, and then the plan is to, at a later date, we don't have a date yet for it, but I know that she was very active. She was on the uh, choir and the bell choir, um, and a lot of people knew her here. So the plan is to have a, a memorial service, a big celebration of her life uh, at a later date. So that we'll, we'll keep you posted on that. We'll let you know um, so that all of us can get together and remember Karen, okay? So that's the plan. So private service Monday and then a later open big service, uh, worship service for her. Uh, anything else that I was gonna say, Pam? Mm -hmm. And thank you for all the kind words about the installation service. And some of you even said that you had cake with us. So that was, oh, yeah. that was great. So thank you for that. All right. Yes, that was great. Okay. So again, stay safe, stay well, and I hope to see you all soon. All right. God bless.